Hi, why do we have so many rules? That's the question I have all the time because the kids get so confused when we have so many rules. I know when I was a child, I was in third grade and my teacher just didn't understand me. I had been gone for approximately maybe like a week and a half. And I was a very shy girl, believe it or not. And my mom had just lost her mother. And it was the first death that I had ever experienced. And it was horrible. I saw my mom just devastated by what she had endured over that whole week and five days, I think it was. And I saw my aunts and my uncles and it was just so traumatic for me. I arrived at the hospital when we first came into town in Kentucky and I saw my grandmother who was a big, a big woman, um, not only in my life, but she was a large woman in general who was shriveled up in a bed and back in that day and time with a big tent around her. And I know she reached out her hand from underneath the tent to grab mine and it was just so frail and it was just so scary for me. I remember my dad just taking me out of the room and walking me down to get a snack. So when my grandmother passed away, I attended the funeral and, and did all the things that you're, you, that goes along with that process. And I went right back to school. See, but there was a secret we had in our family that not a lot of people knew. My parents didn't know how to read or write. So, I had that struggle at home as well. So my teacher told me after I failed the test, not just me, several other people, that I needed to take the test home and have it signed by my parent. And so my dad had been back to work and he was working second shift and so he wasn't able to sign my paper, but I did go over it with my mom. And my mom was so intent on doing everything that she possibly could to make sure that the teacher had a good impression of her, that she wrote her name and wasn't happy with it. So she erased it, wrote it again. I bet she did that five or six times. I said, mom, I really got to get to school. I took the paper and I put it on the teacher's desk and she, there were other kids around her. But as soon as she saw that, I was on my way back to my desk she held it up high and she said, Brenda, you did not sign this test, did you? And I said, no, my mom did. It doesn't look that way. You get out to the hallway. And I just immediately did, of course, what she said. I'm walking out to the hallway and I'm not sure what she means. I, I didn't sign the test, my mom did. And I told her again, my mom signed the test. I'm calling home. I said, oh, please don't do that. See, you did sign this test. And she goes next door to get the other teacher. By this time, everybody in both classrooms is looking at me. I felt so embarrassed and I didn't know what to do. I was fighting back tears and, and the teacher from next door came out and shook her head at me. And, and I thought, what am I going to do? My mom's gonna be so embarrassed. Luckily for me, my older sister was at home and she took the phone call. She quickly came up to the school and, and um, I'm not sure what she said to the teacher, but she took me home. The teacher never apologized to me. We never discussed anything about it. At that moment, I felt like I wasn't safe at school and I sure didn't feel good about being at school. From that moment on, I can remember very little about school other than people picking on me. Um, I didn't feel good until I probably got to high school. And that's when things kind of turned around for me because I met some great teachers who really took um, their time in learning how, a lot about me. And that's what Two Rules is a little bit about. That's when I started to realize I think in my life, a little later in life, when I got involved with education, that no child should ever feel like they're not good enough to be there and that they're not safe. And I don't want anyone to ever be part of a problem for them, but always a solution for them. So the two rules 
is really all you need. We have all these rules, but the kids are always trying to figure out what they're supposed to do. Because in one classroom, you might be able to chew gum, but you go to the next classroom, you can't. It's so confusing for the kids. And then maybe you have one procedure in a classroom where you turn your papers into the teacher directly, or in the next classroom, you have a file system you have to use. There's so many different procedures also that we have to use and the kids get confused. So I narrowed it down to it's responsibility for us as leaders, as principals to work together with our staff and our divide up into two teams and to decide together as a team how we're going to make the systems work the best for us as administrators and teachers, but also for the students and also for our parents, how we communicate with them. So two rules is based on helping everybody to feel good and to feel safe. Now I wanna focus on right now on how you do that for the students and how you first start with building this whole philosophy of two rules. So the first thing you need to do is to establish a trusting relationship. So how I did it the very first time with introducing the two rules is I started with an all school assembly. Now you can do it some different ways. You can do it individually in groups in small groups. You can do it any way that you want to, but this is how I, I started that. I started with showing them that how you start a conversation is not by yelling to get their attention. It's not by trying to threaten them with, you know, losing a recess or for losing free time or, or losing anything. I modeled for them how to start a conversation to get their attention. So I slowly raised up my hand and then I made eye contact with a few of the students and they raised up their hands too. And then before you know it, everybody else is raising up their hands and they're getting quiet and they're looking at me. And I said, okay, I've got everybody's hands up and your eyes are on me. And so I wanna let you know, this is how I start a conversation. I get your attention because you know, when I have my hand up, that means I wanna start a conversation with you. So when I lower my hand, I want you to keep your eyes on me because I'm about to tell you something important for you. So then I would lower my hand and we begin our conversation. I told them that having a conversation is not yelling at each other and not trying to get somebody's attention. And the more you yell, it doesn't mean that it's more important to hear me. This is the tone that we use to have a conversation. So the first thing I wanna tell you is that I trust you. I trust you in being a student here in our school. I trust you for, for walking in and being respectful to me. You're showing that by what you're doing right now. You're looking at me, you're listening, and you're showing me respect. Now I know that I'm going to have to earn that with you. And I plan on doing that in each and every day and modeling that for you because we're going to work together on my two rules. Because you see, I only have two rules. I'm sure you wanna know what those two rules are. See, I believe that everybody should feel good as soon as they walk into our school. And I believe everybody should feel safe when they walk into our school. So we should all feel good and we should all feel safe. Now, how can we do that? Well, we can do that by before you say and before you do anything, I want you to ask yourself some questions. Is about what I'm going to say going to make myself or others feel good? Hmm, if the answer is no, then you know you've got a problem. If what I'm about to do, is it going to make me or others feel safe? Hmm. If it's not, then I've got myself a problem. So you have to stop and think before you make a choice in saying something or doing something. Because see, when you choose 
you have to accept the consequences of what you say and what you do. It's your responsibility. See, we all have choice. We make choices every day. I, you chose what you put on today. Well, maybe your parents laid it out for you, but you still chose to put them on. You chose to brush your teeth. You chose to get quiet when I asked you to get quiet. You always have a choice in everything you say and do. It's all up to you. So you can choose to be part of the problem or you can be part of the solution. The choice is always yours to make. It's not mine. It's not your teachers. It's not your parents. It's always yours. Always keep that in mind because it is all of our responsibilities to make sure our school is the best school around. And it doesn't have to just be about our school. It can be about our community. It can be about your home, your classroom, wherever you go, always make a choice to make sure that you're feeling good everywhere you go and that others are feeling good. Same thing about safety. You all arrive here on buses and you have to choose to make sure it's a safe ride. There's lots of things you can do to make sure that you're safe. Now, just like you play chess and checkers, there's different rules for those games. So there's still going to be rules in life, but when you hear a rule, apply the two rule philosophy and really think about it. So let's take, for example, no chewing gum. Ah, we say, ah, oh, that's a dumb rule. Why would we have no chewing gum? Well, let's think about it. Why would we have no chewing gum? Well, gum can be a choking hazard and you laugh at that, that could be funny. How can you choke on gum? Well, let's just take this for an example. Let's say you're walking down the hallway and you're chewing gum. And let's say the kid behind you, two behind you, shoves the other kid or he trips and falls into the kid and he falls in front of you. Just as you're chewing that gum, that happens and it pops the gum back in your throat and all of a sudden you're choking. It can happen. I, you know, it can. I don't know. I'm not a big proponent of no chewing gum, but that's an example. How about yelling and screaming and standing up on the bus? Apply the two rules. What do you think? Is it making you safe? Making others safe? Making others feel good? What do you think? Think about it. Can you apply the two rules to that? I think you can. So my challenge to you is take a look at the rules and see if you can apply two rules philosophy to them. I think you can. I think you can apply them to lots of things in life because our goal should always be that everybody feels good and everybody feels safe. Because once we start doing that, then we'll see things become more improved and better. We can start communicating together. We can start solving a lot of issues. The main goal of two rule philosophy is helping children build on the skill levels that are within them. And by starting out first with building a trusting relationship and with those few steps and repeating that consistently, we're building on their skill level of self-regulation. And that's the first goal in two rule philosophy. Self-regulation is one of the biggest skill developments that the children need in order to progress through life. If they're able to stop and think before they act and, and before they say or do anything in life, before they make a decision, we can stop a lot of things. And I hope that 
if you have any more questions about two rules, you'll start to follow me and I'm gonna share everything with you. I want you to be as successful as you possibly can, not only in your school, but with your professional life, life in general, and within the community, because it does take home, school, and community working together to make all of this work for our children. Thank you so much.